Hello Church, welcome to our Good Friday service. It's a great time of year to gather together and to come together and to celebrate Jesus. Let's read from the Word of God now from Luke chapter 23 and verse 39. It says this, One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him and said, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Let's pray. Father, we pray right now and we ask that you would speak into our hearts. We ask right now that you would speak from the word of God into our spirits and change us in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the things that we're going to look at today is that Jesus willingly died for us and secondly, that we receive forgiveness of sins through him. And this particular passage of scripture, just to give you some backdrop for it, is that what has happened here is that Jesus has already been come before the council. He's come before Pontius Pilate. He's come back to the council again. He's been crucified. He's now hanging on the cross and the two robbers, he's in between two robbers, one to his left and one to his right. And one of the robbers cries out to him since, says, Don't, and he says to him, aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. It's often uh, a lot of us are represented by this man who is hanging next to Jesus on the cross where people call out, especially at, at this time of where we are in our stage of society right now. With COVID-19 going on and everything happening and there's a lot of people that are quite discouraged a lot of people that are quite distressed and it's interesting how people are always looking for someone to blame. So we've been exposed to some interesting, interesting responses from different people while we're in this particular stage of society in the, the COVID-19 restrictions. One of the things that really interests me is that it's a bit like this guy that's hanging on the cross and they're always looking for someone to blame and always looking for someone else to rescue them rather than accepting responsibility themselves. One of the things that we discover from this passage is that Jesus willingly and actually set his face like stone is how Luke describes it earlier in chapter 9. In chapter 9 verse 51 and 53, Jesus was in Samaria at the time, but they could see that his face was set for Jerusalem. One particular passage of scripture describes it saying that Jesus set his face like flint other versions say he set his face like stone. And this is a reference to Isaiah chapter 50 where uh, verse 6 and verse 7 where Jesus says that I bared my back for those to beat me. And they pulled out my beard, which is what happened before Jesus was crucified by the Praetorium Guard and the soldiers. And they also spat upon me. So of course we read that where Jesus was blindfolded by the soldiers. They put a crown of thorns on his head and they beat him and they said, who beat you? Who was it? And they mocked him. And Jesus said that he willingly went that it describes it in Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 6. And then in verse 7, it says that he set his face like stone. And then Luke refers to this. He brings this out. He bores this out in his particular, particular passage of scripture in Luke chapter 9, 51 and 53, where it says that he set his face like stone for Jerusalem. Jesus willingly went to Jerusalem knowing that this is what was going to happen to him. He knew that he was going to be crucified. He knew that he was going to be beaten. He knew that he was going to be mocked. And he knew, also knew that when he hung on that cross, when he hung on the cross for you and I, he would be separated from the Father. And so this is one of the things that we need to understand is that Jesus willingly and voluntarily went to the cross for you and I. Actually, the writer of Hebrews describes it like this. The writer of Hebrews says that... Uh, for the joy of the cross, I, I, I might quickly refer to it. It says here in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So it was the joy that was set before him, the joy of the cross. How could you possibly describe an experience of the cross, of a crucifixion? for the joy that was set before him. And so what the writer of Hebrews does is that it's alerting us, it's bringing out really 
explaining and describing, I guess, the Messiah. So Jesus willingly went to the cross for you and I. He went there because he needed to go there to satisfy the punishment that all of us actually deserve. It's really interesting. Um, when Jesus' ministry was being released, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He's, going, he's looking off to Jesus in the distance. Behold, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And when Jews celebrate Passover, what they do is they pick a, a lamb. They find a lamb that's one year old and they bring it into the, they used to bring it into the household and they would have it there for roughly three or four days and then make sure that it was okay and it was, it was according to scripture. And Jesus was very much the same. Jesus was the Passover lamb. And so what they would do with this lamb is they'd bring the lamb and then when it was time for Passover, they would lay their hand on the head of the lamb and the, the head of the house, the, the, the father of the house, would lay his hand on the head of the lamb and pray the sins of the family and impute, send away or place upon the sins of that family on the lamb and it was symbolic of what was coming with the sacrifice of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And then they would slay the lamb and they would eat it. And so in the same way, every Jewish family would have understood that when John the Baptist said, uh, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, that's automatically the picture that would have been in their minds, that this is the Passover lamb. John the Baptist, that's basically what he was saying. This is the Passover lamb that takes away the sins of the world. So... Jesus went to the cross willingly. He set his face like flint to die for you and I. And that was to satisfy the punishment that was required in order for mankind to receive the forgiveness of sins. Because the reality is that none of us deserve to be forgiven of our sins. What I find, I don't know how you guys are, but what I find myself is that I can forgive other people's sins really easily, but my own, I tend to get hung up on them. I tend to overthink them. I tend to overanalyze them. I tend to feel guilty about them. I go through a period of time where I uh, can kind of feel a little bit better and, and then I'll come to God. The Word of God actually tells us to do the opposite. The Word of God tells us to go boldly to the throne of grace. Again in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, go boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy in our time of need. It's interesting, Anna and I, there was a friend of ours, we were at Carol's quite a few years ago now, uh, um, and we were there at Carol's and there was a woman there who was a, a prostitute. I'm just going to put it straight out. And she said to us, she, we were sitting down there waiting for the Carol's to start, and she said, you know what I do for a living, don't you? And we both said, yes, we do. Uh, but we sat there and just enjoyed Carol's and everything else. She said, she said, do you think that Jesus could ever forgive me? And before either of us could really think about it, we both just blurted out, of course he can. Of course Jesus can forgive you. Jesus can forgive all sins. Well, uh, long story short, she, of course, repented, came back to God. Her father was a pastor. She repented and came back to Jesus. And at one stage went sobbing to her father, her actual father, and said, Dad, I don't think I'll ever have kids because of my previous life. Um, it's just not going to happen for me. And he said, just leave it in Jesus' hands. I don't think he even prayed for anything. He pretty much fobbed her off is the way that uh, she described it later. But she's now got four children. So we blurted out these words. Yes, of course Jesus can forgive you. When we talk to someone else, we'll often be at a, a place where we go, yes, of course Jesus can forgive you. But when it's us, when it's us that's mucked up, when it's us that's done the wrong, when it's us that's committed the, the crime, when it's us that's... Uh, committed this great sin we often want to hold that rather than coming to Jesus with that with that thing with that issue rather than confronting ourselves and being honest and just owning up and going I've done this we'll often just hang on to it and try and theorize and rationalize and do all those things whereas really what we need to do is pretty much what this man was doing that was hanging on the cross next to Jesus so in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7, it says, in, in him we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins. And in verse 8, it says that he lavishes his grace upon us. 
This forgiveness of sins is a biggie. It really is so important that we understand that Jesus forgives us of all of our sins. Can I say that again? Jesus forgives us of all our sins. Every single one. Not just the little ones. Not just the ones that we can go, that's not too bad, but that other stuff. Yeah. Jesus wants to forgive us of all of our sins. He went to the cross willingly. For the joy of the cross that was set before him, he went so that we could receive forgiveness of sins. And so one of the things that we've got to really take into our hearts today, one of the things that we've got to take from Good Friday, wasn't it great that Daylight Saving finished? <laughs> the days are shorter. Have you noticed the nights are a little bit cooler? It, it's, just, it's just that refreshing time of year where um, summer's behind us now. The bushfires are behind us now. We've got other stuff to worry about, but still it's good. The drought's behind us now because the drought across most of Australia, still some sections, but the drought's behind us. And so the grass is green. It's growing. The nights are cooler. It's, it's just really nice. One of the things that we should do in this incredible time of year is to remember to celebrate Jesus because Jesus went to the cross willingly for the joy of the cross set before him. And it, the reason why there was joy in the cross for Jesus is because he was winning the salvation. The punishment was placed upon him, just like that Passover lamb. The punishment, the father of the house would lay his hand and it's like the sins, it's like you're placing the hands on the, the sin the hand that went on the head of the lamb, the sin was being placed on the head of the Passover lamb and Jesus is our lamb. He's the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Your sins and mine. Isn't that incredible? It's just so wonderful. Forgiveness of sins. And so we come back, of course, to our men hanging on the cross. And the thing is, the reality for us is that we can be one of the two men hanging on the cross. One of them was blaming Jesus and going, aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself. And while you're at it, uh, how about me? <laughs> so some of us are like that guy that's hanging on the cross. We're going, we're looking for someone else to blame. We're looking for someone else to rescue us. We just, wanna, we just want out of this situation. But the other guy on the cross, he really had his head around it. And he's hanging there in agony. So let's perhaps not put ourselves in his position, but... He's hanging there in agony and even in agony he was able to uh, think through and I, was, I guess have an epiphany. You'd, I think it's much safer to have an epiphany somewhere else other than hanging on a cross. If you can kind of have that revelation in your heart, uh, that's a much less painful way to go. And so this man had an epiphany as he's hanging on the cross, a revelation, a light bulb moment you'd almost call it where he rebukes this other guy that's on the other side of Jesus and he says, don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. So all these three guys, Jesus and the two other robbers or thieves as they were called, we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. So here's a guy that understands completely that he had done wrong and he does deserve to be there. He's not whinging, he's not complaining, he's not trying to find someone else. He's not trying to blame someone else. He's just going, yep, did it. Guilty. Guilty charge. I got what I deserved. And sometimes when you come to that place, it really does something inside of your heart when you come to that place. And then he says, but this man has done nothing wrong. He even understood that Jesus was completely guiltless. Jesus, and he said to him, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So not only did he understand his own guilt, but he also understand, understood the complete guiltlessness of the man who hung next to him. And he also probably understood that he was hanging next in the way that he could possibly understand it. He was hanging next to the Messiah, the Savior, the Rescuer the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, the Passover Lamb. And Jesus answered him and said, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now here's the thing. Here's the thing. With our sins, sometimes we just think that time's going to take away the sting of it. We should go to Jesus 
and let him. We should take our sins to Jesus. We should take our sins figuratively to the cross, to the man that went there for the joy set before him, went there for you and I. And just like the woman that I was talking about earlier, my wife Anna and I, we blurted out straight away, yes, of course Jesus can forgive you. And so today, one of the things you need to say is, yes, of course Jesus can forgive me. Yes, of course Jesus can forgive me of everything that I've ever done. And so we're going to pray in a few moments because we are a little bit like one of those two guys hanging on the cross. One understood it completely what he deserved and knew that Jesus alone could rescue him. Another was just trying to blame someone else and find an, another way around, another way out. So today, Good Friday, as we actually celebrate Jesus' death because of the joy set before him, we, we celebrate, we, we remember, we commemorate. I guess the celebration is done on Sunday because we've got uh, church on Sunday, Celebration Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. So it's more of a celebration on Sunday, but we certainly commemorate Jesus dying on the cross for you and I on this Good Friday. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart today. I ask that you would speak into my spirit just like you've spoken to that man that was hanging next to you on the cross. Bring revelation to my heart right now, just as you brought revelation to his. Bring revelation to my heart that you forgive me. Jesus, you forgive me. Say those words. Jesus, you forgive me of all my sins. And I receive that forgiveness right now, by faith, in you as my Lord and Saviour, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time or if you've prayed it before, but today it really spoke into your heart, I'd love you to contact us. Contact us by email or by phone and just say, when I watched the Good Friday service, I really prayed that prayer from the bottom of my heart. And I sense the change in my spirit. Why don't you contact us through our website and just let us know that Jesus loves you and that you've really made a decision to walk with him. It's been great to be here together. I encourage you to join us again on Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday, as we come together as a family in our homes, but as we come together and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Thank you.